Okay, cool, let's okay. start. Guten Tag, guten Morgen, guten Abend. We will together download GitHub Desktop, as well as the repository for the community water model, C1M, as well as a repository holding global data and example climate and input data for the Rhine Basin. I'm with my colleague, uh, Ting Tang. How are you, Ting? Good, good. Good. Um, can you search for GitHub Desktop? Of course. G-I-T-H-U-B Desktop, D-E-S-K-T-O-P. T-O-P. You Perfect. see my screen, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. This. Download for Windows. And if you have a different yes. system, there are other systems. It's fast, that's it's good. Fast. Here from here. You can sign in, but you also need not. You can also skip this step. Mm -hmm. Although um, I think you still have to type in your name just so that it registers something if you uh, push to any repository or make a comment. Great, let's go back to uh, search for the repository CWATM. Uh, so what should I do here exactly uh, go on to my a, screen? Uh, go to a browser. Uh, but on this uh, installation on my screen, what should I do? Yeah, we'll come back to this. We first have to find the link for the CWATM repository. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, search CWATM and then GitHub. Mm -hmm. And then also IASA, I-I-A-S-A, -A. Uh, perfect, this one. Uh, see this green button in the right that says code? Mm -hmm. uh, click it, and then just try to click open with GitHub Desktop, and let's see what happens. Yeah, it takes you to the link. Um, so let's go back to... Um, just push back actually on the browser back to what like push the back button to go to the previous page uh-huh yeah and go back to the code button and then copy this link so you see this copy button yeah copy to clipboard and then let's go back to github desktop you mean here right yeah uh click clone a repository from the internet and then to the right, go to URL. And then you can just paste it in here. Um, for your local path, what preference do you have? I would put mine in C colon slash GitHub slash C1M, avoiding all that before. Mm -hmm. But you can also put it in here as you prefer. Does it create a new path if I remove this? Yes. Maybe I don't have administrative rights for that, no? Uh, I think it should be fine, but I guess we would see. But I think you're allowed to go all the way into C. Mm -hmm. Let's try. Are you Ting? Mm-hmm. It's working. It's working. Yeah, it's downloading. It's cloning the model locally to my C drive. Exactly. Okay, already finished. Awesome. Let's um, clone one more repository. Um, could you go back to the browser that had GitHub? C oh, here we are. So in the left, where it says IASA slash C1M, could you click IASA? Mm-hmm. 
and scroll down just slightly, and where it says find a repository, could you search CWATM? Um, and you see just at the bottom, there's the CWATM-earth-30min. Mm -hmm. I click this. And I go to the code button, and then copy the code like before. And then we'll take this to GitHub Desktop. Now here, go to File, Clone Repository. We're already in URL, so yeah, you can just put the URL in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So it goes into this GitHub folder, and then the CWM Earth 30 min. Does, does it matter if it's in a different path, or it, <laughs> like because it's C and we get in a get up? Get up folder under C. If it's yeah. on a different folder, does it matter? No, in fact, any folder you put it in, as long as you tell it right now, would be fine. I prefer to keep all my GitHub repositories within the GitHub folder, but really, you could put it wherever you want. Mm -hmm. So I make a clone. Maybe I also open the folder to check. So the save button model and save button earth 13. Cool. So can you explain what this f file for? Yeah, this folder holds uh, most of the input files to run CWATM at 30 arc minutes. So that's like a 50 by 50 kilometer resolution um, globally or for any basin or any region around the world at that resolution. Uh, what it doesn't include is the climate data. It's too large to hold in this folder, so uh, we have that in a different, uh, different folder that we can download in another way. But what we do have here is example climate data for the Rhine Basin. So we can use this folder to already test CWATM uh, for the Rhine Basin. Super. Super. Thanks um, for the explanation. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, in GitHub Desktop, it's asking you to initialize JIT, Git LFS. That stands for Large uh, File Storage. Um, mm -hmm. Click Initialize Git LFS. Okay. Um, let's go to the folder where CWATM is in. So, C, GitHub, CWATM. You mean this one, right? Perfect, yeah. And let's go into Tutorials. Uh, and then the first one, one turn dash on. Perfect. So then let's uh, let's double click the batch file one dash one underscore turn on. And the purpose of this one is to is to turn on CWATM. So we don't use any settings file. We just see if CWATM can turn on. Basically checking if we have uh, the right uh, Python packages installed. And we mm -hmm. see here that we don't have pandas installed. So we try to install. We try to install pandas. Yes. Perfect. And Pip. We check if it's there. It is not. So I exit because this is a Python executable. Exactly. So we'll just open with cmd. CMD as a command prompt and with pipe install pandas. Now it looks here like pandas is already installed. Um, could you type in Python? Mm -hmm. uh, and you have Python, Python 3.10. Yeah, and we imp try to import pandas. And the module does not exist. So it seems that we have at least more than one version of Python. Um, and we are using Anaconda on your computer, so I guess the Anaconda version of Python is different than the Python that's being called with Python 3.10. Yeah. Um, let's find, uh, let's open up an Anaconda command prompt.
He'll go to Anaconda, Anaconda prompt, clear. And he'll type in Python. Okay, so this is, so your computer is looking at Python 3.9 and 3.10. Yep. Um, can you exit the Python in the Anaconda prompt and let's see if Pandas is installed on the Anaconda Python? I mean, we, c we don't need to exit, we just import it. Huh? Yeah. Sure. Is that, is that what perfect, you Perfect, yeah. perfect, perfect. Not what I meant, but a better idea. Okay, so we have pandas here. Okay, so the goal is to have your computer call the Anaconda Python 3.9 version of Python instead of 3.10 version of Python when you type in Python. Mm -hmm. um, so now can you exit the Python environment? Oh no, you're actually still going to stay in here. We want to find the location of Python 3.9 on your computer. Mm -hmm. So here we import the system and then try to find where the executable super, is. Super. And we, we can do similar maybe for here just to, sure. to kind of identify the problem. We are, I'm not in the Python environment, so now I'm in Python environment. I import the package that can do the work and then print where the executable is. So basically there is a Python version here that's um, installed under in Inkscape and there is a version un under Anconda and somehow the system is calling the version that is under Inkscape. Cool. Well, it should be calling in the other version. Exactly. Or at least we wanted to call the other version. Where the packages are already being installed. Right. Um, what do you suggest? So so we be, we, what we need to do is to add into the system's environment variable to ask the system to switch to Python that installed under Anconda when it's calling Python to make sense of it, make Perfect. our life a bit easier. So here we search for this uh, system's environment variable. Depending on your system, you might be asked to put um, some information. Administrative username and password. Yeah. And here we click the environment variable and in the path. Under system variables, if you can access it. Yeah. yeah. And there we add a new one with the path of the Anconda path, this one. Yeah, without the python.exe. Yes. And without the slash. We don't have the slash, we don't need the slash neither. And let's try if this ah, works. Okay. We can try first yeah, and then. Sure, sure. <laughs> So it still says the model does not exist. So what we will try to do next is to move this one. Yeah, yeah. Move this up because I, basically here the in, in Inkscape is still above. And let's try if by moving up it would work. Otherwise, we might consider just delete the Inkscape um, path. Awesome. awesome. Here we go. Here we go. Um, do you want to do one more step and see if we can run the Rhine Basin? Let me turn. Put things away. Yes. You can close out of this. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll have to correct one path. Could you open up the settings file settings underscore Rhine dash 30 min at the bottom of this folder? Mm hmm. Yeah. 
and go, yeah, perfect, edit with notepad. Scroll down. Keep scrolling down, I'll tell you when to stop. We're looking what's, for... What's in there? Yeah, keep scrolling down and right here, uh, just a little bit up. A little bit up further. And just a little bit more. Yeah, right here, file paths. Mm -hmm. uh, the output is fine. Um, for the path root, can you just delete the part that says c1m-input? So basically it's saying go three folders up and you'll find the path or you'll find the folder c1m earth that 30 minutes. So we're in, we're in tutorials. One up is c1m. So he, one up is in, is in here. The second one up is in c1m and the third one up is in github. Mm -hmm. And then it finds this folder here. So that's all we have to do. Mm -hmm. Now if we save, save this, it. perfect. Yeah. And then go back to tutorials. And then one dash two underscore Rhine, the batch file, we can double click this. Checking output file path. Ah, interesting, yeah. There should be a folder in this folder called output. By the time someone sees this video, maybe that's automatically in there. But for you, uh, yes, make a folder called output. Mm -hmm. And then try again. Awesome, awesome. So we at least have see what I'm able to run without a settings file and then with the settings file related to the run. We can go more into this, Ryan, uh, the next time we're together. Yeah, sounds great.